So it wasn't the crater. It was it produced a lot of things like tidal waves. What would a universe that was created from nothing, getting a rocket and launching it with enough time to deflect its trajectory by enough to 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 miss the Earth, and that's the mm. idea of planetary defense. It's a really useful thing. I mean, the likelihood that we're going to be hit is small. The big asteroids take maybe once every hundred million years. Okay. Smaller uh, ones, okay. well, those are Earth-destroying asteroids, but ones that could cause havoc are probably, you know, more frequent. But it's not that, not that frequent, but it's still a reality, unlike many things that people spend money on. How it, big was the asteroid that took out the dinosaurs? It, I th it, it was probably, uh, um, it, it, was, it was between one and 10 kilometers across in size. See, that's not that big. I know. But it... I know it isn't that big. A one kilometer asteroid would that hit the Earth would cause massive def uh, devastation. Uh, Hundred meters so? wouldn't, but uh, one kilometer, and so ten kilometers is probably Earth life destroying. Is it because the force of the impact gets it down to like the core? No, or, no, no, or no, not no nothing core, like that. Like no, a, no, no, no. It didn't. This one that the, that the one that killed the dinosaurs that landed in Chicxulub. It just landed. What there's a big crater in the underwater. Now it's underwater in Central America. And um, so it wasn't the crater. It was. It produced a lot of things like tidal waves. But it also in the at, in the atmosphere, it's going very fast and it and it burning hot. And it produced and it knocked out stuff that would produce fires throughout the whole world. So you know, there's many w different ways you could have imagined. So that could have changed the climate and destroyed dinosaurs. It might have affected the the oceans, the the acidic level of the oceans from all the. Uh, 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 the, uh, the, the force of the impact and the fires that happened. So there's lo no one, I think, it's not clear what mech, what exactly killed the dinosaurs but, but uh, as a result of that collision, but it could do many different things that would do it. And so you wouldn't want to be around when such a thing happened. Do you Although the smallest mammals survived, right? And like we're what? lucky that they survived because they became birds and, and everything else that we... Uh, what mammals survived? Well, we, I mean, there were small... The, the ancestors of birds and, and, and that are now birds, who are little dinosaurs. And, and, uh, and the point is that big things tended to not survive, little things tended to survive. And those little things, if nothing survived, we wouldn't be here, right? No. So some things had to evolve, evolve in, and, and into us, survive and evolve into us. So we're lucky. We're, we're the, that, you know, that they were, and we're an accident. If the, that hadn't happened, you know, maybe that we'd be, be two dinosaurs having a podcast right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, if you talk to I other like physicists, they, <laughs> if you talk to other physicists, they'll talk about, and I don't want to get to multiverse yet, but yeah. sometimes if you look at like theoretical multiverse, it could sometimes even be where we're tuned to yeah. just the right frequency that there's dinosaurs in this room right now in another reality. In another reality. Yeah. That's a little metaphysical for me, but it's yeah. It's definitely yeah. out there. Yeah. But, yeah. but what, how old were you when you first came up with your theory that everything came from nothing and that, you know, to extend that, that there is no God or, or something. Or well, creator. I mean, I started to kind of figure the God thing was, was um, not likely when I was, you know, a, a kid, when I was 12 or 13. Why? Probably, well, the story seemed kind of silly mm. and everything I knew about the universe seemed to suggest that there weren't any miracles happening that I could see. And uh, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't think it's some sort of miracle that something like the Big Bang could just—it's miraculous, but it's not a miracle. It doesn't defy the laws of physics. I think that that's sound, what, that sounds like I—I I didn't fuck her, but I used a condom. Yeah. Like, well, maybe, but I guess what? Do you, how do you define a miracle? Something that is beyond that is beyond. Mm -hmm. See, you're physical. Having a hard time. That something that is beyond what we know is physical possibility. No, that's not a miracle. That's just how do you define it? Uh, a miracle, I'd say, is something that violates known laws of physics. See, that's the very science answer. That yeah, because, it, you know, if it's just stuff we don't understand, that it's not miraculous. It's just amazing. Okay, and so maybe I shouldn't use the word miraculous. I should say it's amazing the Big Bang happened. But it's... A, but uh, Is there it, anything we can't explain about the Big Bang There's right lots now? of things we can't explain, but not like what? understanding... I've, what I've said many times, and listen to this carefully. Okay. And believe me later. Um, <laughs> but anyway... Uh, but, He's dying over yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, is that not understanding something is not evidence for God. It's evidence for not understanding. There's a lot we don't understand about the universe, but that doesn't mean we'll never understand it. 
So we, you know, my new book, The Edge of Knowledge, is the first sentence says the three most important words in science are I don't know. Oh yeah. Okay, because not knowing is an invitation to explore and discover. I love that message. Yeah, it is an more important. People, me- more people need to hear that, not yeah. just in science. Yeah. Oh, and particularly not just in yeah. science, and and that's why I think it's important. But so so yeah, there's a lot we don't understand about the Big Bang. We don't understand when I talk about how the universe came from nothing. I can't prove. I, I don't have a theory of quantum gravity. All I can show is that it's plausible. And the fact that it's plausible that you can create a universe with 100 billion galaxies without any supernatural shenanigans is amazing to me. <laughs> and I thought amazing enough to write a book about. And, uh, and so, you know, what I can say is the following. If you asked, what would a universe that was created from nothing, that arose from nothing spontaneously by plausible extensions of the known laws of physics, what would such a universe, if it lasted 13.8 billion years long, What would such a universe look like? And the answer is, it would look precisely like the universe in which we live. Now, does that prove that's the case? No, but it's strongly suggestive. 